Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Friday. How are you today? I hope that you are doing well. Um, it is going to be full of rain today. Lots and lots of rain today. The weather is not supposed to be very nice. Um, it's not going to be very cold, but it is going to be raining a lot today. So get out the rubber boots and the umbrella <laughs> in this area. All along the East Coast, I guess it's supposed to be that way. So hopefully the weather's not too bad where you are. Good morning, Melinda. How are you today? All right, let's see here. I want to pull this up on my computer, make sure I can tell who's here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, let's see. Let's try refreshing again, see if it'll come up. Mm. Ha, ha, ha. It's being slow. Probably because of the weather, right? <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, Benita. How are you? I hope you're well today too. Uh, there we are. Okay. There it is. All right. Good. Good. Okay. So today's verse, um, let's see here. First of all, we're going to start out with uh, the blessed method. So I use what I call the blessed method in my devotionals every single day. It's a method that I came up with when I realized that I was doing the same things every single day in my journal pages. And the blessed method stands for B is for the Bible verse, the scripture that I give you every day. I give you in um, a free download that talks about growing in grace for March. Uh, I'm working on April's right now. So hopefully I'll have that soon. Um, and so the Bible verses first, the L is for listening for God's voice, praying to him to ask him to open your heart and let you, you understand what this verse means. The E is standing for exploring the history. I love hearing and understanding uh, who wrote it, when it was written, who was it written to. The first S is for studying the key words, uh, figuring out what they mean and how they pertain to the scripture. And the second S is for sharing those words for um, I just I just talk about what they mean to me. OK, all right, let's go ahead and get started. So today's verse is one of uh, my favorites um, book is my favorite, too. It's in James, James 4, 6, and it says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Will you pray with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, I know that I am nothing without you. Your word reminds me that you oppose the proud, but you do show favor to the humble. Help me to always walk in humility before you, recognizing that all I have, all I am is from you. Forgive me for the times when I've thought that I could do things on my own strength and my own wisdom and take away that pride that I have in my heart and replace it with a deep sense of humility and dependence on you. Help me to trust in you completely, knowing that you will guide me and provide for me as I follow your lead. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. OK, so as I said, this book was written by James. Uh, I, I love the book of James. James was the brother of Jesus. And um, this book was written in the mid to late first century AD, which makes it one of the earliest books in the New Testament. And James wrote it to the Jewish Christians who had been scattered all through Mediterranean region because they were being persecuted. So James was encouraging the readers to resist the temptation to pursue all those worldly pleasures and instead draw near to God in humility. And over the years, this verse has been used to emphasize the importance of humility and dependence on God. And it has been used in sermons and devotionals and all kinds of spiritual writings, encouraging the readers to resist the temptation of pride and seek that deeper relationship with God through humility and submission. So the key words for today are um, that the phrase is it's such a short scripture. God opposes the proud. So James is indicating that God actively works against those who are full of pride and self-reliance. Pride's often seen as a negative quality in the Bible. And James is warning his re readers not to become so proud and self-sufficient that they begin to think they don't need God. 
On the other hand, when James says that God shows favor to the humble, he's indicating that God extends grace. He extends mercy to those who are humble and dependent on him. And humility is seen as a positive quality in the Bible. And James is encouraging his readers to develop a sense of humility and submission. So we are, as I'm sure you know, we are bombarded with messages today that tell us to be proud of our achievements and to take credit for our successes. And we're encouraged to believe that we are solely responsible for our own happiness and that success is measured by those accomplishments and our material possessions. But that kind of thinking can be a major obstacle in our spiritual lives. When we're so overly focused on our own accomplishments, we become prideful and we forget that everything we have, everything we are comes from God. We start to believe that we're self-sufficient and we don't need God's help or guidance. And that's where James 4, 6 comes in. It reminds us that God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So we're called to humble ourselves before God, acknowledge that all good things come from him. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't take pride in our work or pride in our accomplishments, but we always need to give credit where credit is due. We need to recognize that without God's help and provision, we would not be where we are today. It is such a fine line between being proud of something we do and make sure God gets the credit. We need to remember that our accomplishments are not just our own. They're rather a result of God's blessings and grace in our lives. We can take pride in our work and the gifts that he's given us, but we always need to give thanks to him and acknowledge his role in our success. In our culture today, it can be so challenging to maintain that balance. We're so bombarded with messages that we need to be putting ourselves first. But as followers of Christ, we're called to live differently. We're called to put God first and to humble ourselves before him. So how do we do that? How do we remember to do that daily? We need to start every day in prayer and thank God, give him all the gratitude and surrender to him. We need to acknowledge our need for God's grace and guidance and ask him to help us to stay humble and focused on him throughout the day. And as we go about our daily tasks, our interactions with others, we need to seek to reflect God's love and grace by putting others first and giving credit where credit is due. I know I would not be where I am today without his love and without his grace. Amen. Amen. All right. So the Bible cross references for today, we have uh, Proverbs 3, 34. Uh, 1 Peter 5, verses 5 and 6, Philippians 2, verse 3, and Matthew 23, verse 12. All right, let me know what you thought of today's devotional, um, how you deal with this issue of pride. What does it mean to you? If you're watching this on replay, make sure you type in replay so that it gets bounced back up to the top of the page and like the video. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Joe. How are you today? Good to see you here, too. Make sure that you like the video so that we know that you saw it and type in replay. And we will see you tomorrow. I should be on a regular time tomorrow, uh, but then I'm going to have my grand boys, grandbabies here tomorrow. So um, I will be spending the day and afternoon with them. I get uh, Gannon, baby Gannon, who's only a little over three months old uh, for the afternoon while mommy and daddy do some fun stuff. And then Jillian and Josiah are coming over to spend the afternoon too. So I get to spend the weekend with my boys (laughs) and my daughter. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much. I pray that you have a very, very blessed day. Bye-bye.